I have joked plenty of times about how ever since Brendan Knight got kicked out of Mozilla, he's basically just been rebuilding the company from the ground up, and in many ways doing it more efficiently, doing it more productively, and most importantly, isn't collapsing. And this is becoming less and less of a joke every single day, and more of a, uh, observation of reality and a predictor for what Brave is going to do next. So recently Brave opened up public access to Brave Talk. I don't know when they were doing this like behind doors testing, but a couple of days ago it became available to the public. Now I'm not going to say they launched or they made anything because as we'll see in a bit, that is a lie. But before we get into my rant that I always get into when I talk about Brave, let's talk about what Brave Talk actually is. So Brave Talk is a new chat service built directly into your browser, except it's not. That's a lie. And Brave should really stop saying that because it's not built into your browser. So what Brave Talk is, is it has this little icon in the bottom right hand corner of a new tab on Brave and this links you to a website. Now this does say, oh, this is the widget link, but if we go and take this to something like, you know, anything else, you can go and connect to Brave Talk from a different browser. It's just that as we get into in a bit, you won't be able to make calls from different browsers. So this is about as integrated into your web browser as like a browser bookmark is. And this is being pitched as a privacy alternative to things like Zoom. Now, obviously, they're going to have to collect some information to make it actually function. And they do have this listed inside their privacy policy. So when you obviously connect to the website, they have to know what your IP address is so you can connect to the website. But according to them, these will not be retained after the call actually ends. Also, if you use the like the text chat functionality, that is going to have to be cached for the duration of the meeting, but presumably it doesn't actually say this. Presumably that will be deleted after that is done as well. Also, if you use the uh, the built-in recording functionality, obviously the recordings will be saved on their servers, but they will be deleted after 24 hours. Now, does anyone remember Mozilla VPN? That VPN service that Mozilla launched, but what it actually was was just reselling Molvad VPN. But if it was just that, it would have been fine. It was actually worse Molvad VPN and less privacy friendly than just using it directly because it also required you to make an account that had an email address attached to it, which Molvad does not require. And I feel like I am going absolutely crazy. I keep seeing these articles saying things like Brave launches a privacy-focused competitor to Zoom. Brave introduces Brave Talk, a private Zoom alternative that works directly in the browser. Brave adds video chat function that's supported on rival browsers. Brave built the function to minimize data collection, nothing linking you or anyone else to a call, period, it says. They didn't build anything. This, you can see from the picture, and they don't hide this at all, this is Jitsi. Brave isn't doing anything bad here, at least anything really bad. I'll get into why you probably shouldn't use Brave Talk anyway, but every single journalist is useless at their job. If we just scroll down to the FAQ section at the bottom of the page, the Brave Talk service is provided in partnership with 8x8, and the service is built on the open source Jitsi platform. 8x8 sells hosting for various chat solutions. One of those solutions is Jitsi as a service. Literally, what Brave Talk is, is reselling 8x8 Jitsi hosting. Now, Brave claims that they have done something different, but. I am unable to work out what that something different is. So let's go and start a call in Brave Talk. So start free call one on one. Give that a second to load. It's going to prompt me for a name I want to use. Uh, let's go and give that my camera. So let's go and join the meeting as Brody. And we're in the meeting. Okay, cool. We have a toolbar down the bottom here. We have some settings in here. We have some security options. Okay, yeah, this looks pretty good. Let's go and look at this over on a Jitsi instance. 
This is meet.jit.si. This is the official Jitsi instance, but it'll look exactly the same regardless of what instance you're using or if you go and self-host it. So let's go and use the uh, room called test meeting, which probably isn't one you should do for anything actually serious. As we can see, the interface here looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? It looks, uh, it looks very familiar, except it doesn't have an annoying purple theme. Let's go and join this. And this UI, well, this, this UI looks very similar. The security options look exactly the same, in fact. The only different thing is they changed end-to-end -end encryption here to being video bridge encryption over here. But they didn't actually change the encryption. They just changed the name of it, so they modified a variable from what I can tell. Now, if this claim that they're improving Brave Talk is completely true, that's good. Jitsi does need a little bit of work around the edges, and anything to help Jitsi improve is going to be a good thing. Now, what you might expect is that in the fork that they maintain, they actually have changes that they have added, but this is the repo, and there hasn't been a change in 14 months. So, either they are making changes to it, and not releasing those changes publicly, which in my mind would make it not open source, or they're actually not changing anything and have just deployed Jitsi. Issues are not open, so good luck submitting a bug that it has, and when it comes to the pull requests, while there are some pull requests that do exist, there's nothing really substantial in here. There is 23 pull requests, which, you know, is pretty crazy for like a a massive chat app that's been deployed that Brave has clearly massively modified, but nothing they've done in here is substantial. So they've done things like syncing a branch. They have gone and removed some duplicated code. Wow, that, that's a big one. They've gone and fixed some CSS. They've updated the HTML file. Wow, that's crazy. More branches, more CSS. We'll change some images, 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 more images, more CSS, and we changed some theming. So, if this is everything they have done, um, I, 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 I don't know about you guys, but I don't, I don't think this is really substantially different from just using Jitsi. But if you think that's good, it gets so much better from here. Just keep watching. So Jitsi is an amazing open source video conferencing platform, and I use it fairly frequently when I have guests for the podcast who don't use Discord. You can argue about me using Discord, but the video is going to be public anyway, so I, I don't care if it's not encrypted. So... <laughs> Brave Talk basically just takes a public Jitsi instance and then makes it worse. Or if you want to go and host yourself, just takes Jitsi and makes it worse. So let's look at some of Brave Talk's anti-features. So I showed you before that when you want to make a call, this can be done from inside of the Brave browser, but doing the same thing from a different browser like say Chromium or Firefox or literally anything else, it's going to give you this prompt saying, Download Brave to start a call, but you can go and uh, join a call from a different browser. You just cannot start one, so that that's a very convenient feature. Do you know why it's like this? It is like this so that uh, they can encourage people to use Brave. Not because there's any functional reason why their Jitsi instance won't work in a different browser, that's the only reason. Now, you may have noticed this thing right here. So, one-on-one <laughs> -on -one calls are completely free. That's cool. You can just have limitless calls like every other chat platform on the planet, even encrypted ones. But if you want to have a group call, not just like, hey, you want to have, you know, a hundred people for like a, a big class or something. You want to have three people that's going to cost you seven US dollars a month. And do you know what you can pay for it with? MasterCard, Visa, PayPal, a bunch of other popular payment processes, but not BAT. You know, that thing that comes with the Brave browser, they encourage you to enable so you can make extra money on the side while viewing ads that are private and stuff. They will not accept that for payment for the premium account. 
Also, those free calls actually get even better. I said it was completely free, but that's not 100% accurate. There is one reason why it requires you to start a call inside of the Brave browser. So... If you do not have Brave Rewards enabled, you cannot start a free call because the way they are paying for those free calls is by basically scraping off the top of the Brave Rewards. That's fine. If that's what you want to do, that's perfectly okay. But don't pretend like it's free. It's obviously not. But that's where it gets even better. So if they're paying for the free accounts through the Brave Rewards, you would assume that if you have a premium account, that would be fine to use any other browser with. But if you had noticed, if we open up in Chromium, there is no prompt to actually uh, log in. So if you are paying seven US dollars a month, you still cannot use other browsers. It still forces you to use Brave. Why? Well, they want more users and that's okay, but Come on, I'm paying you seven US dollars a month. Let me use a different browser. You're making enough money off of me. But here's the funny thing about premium. Whoever programmed the restrictions is a bit of a moron. So the only restriction that works is one-on-one -on -one calls. You cannot do any more if you have a free account. But things like setting a passcode are also supposed to be premium. Um, but you can you can set that. So that's fine. Also things like uh muting other participants also supposed to be premium and a bunch of other moderation tools like that and also call recording. Now call recording seems like one you could very easily handle and make it so free accounts can't actually do. But um Y yeah, you can you can just start recording a recording. Is on. That was very loud. You can just start a recording, and when the recording is done, ah, uh, you can you can download the recording, and it's fine. Now, when it comes to encryption, just in case the uh, the brave devs watching this didn't actually know this, um, in the Jitsi configuration file, you can actually enable this by default, but it's disabled by default because it's currently a ah. Uh, experimental feature and in brave talk it is also disabled by default so it's very likely that most of the calls happening on brave talk are not going to be encrypted because people are just not going to check these settings because they're going to assume that by default if you're using brave talk it's going to be encrypted because they keep talking about privacy and all the articles are talking about how it's an encrypted chat but, um, yeah, it's, it's not enabled by default. There is one advantage I will give to Brave Talk. If you go and self-host Jitsi on, like, an equivalently priced VPS, so something in, like, the $5 to $10 range, because you're probably not going to be able to find a $7 VPS. Let's say a $10 VPS. You won't be able to handle a 100-person call like Brave Talk is going to be able to. Because Brave Talk is reselling Jitsi from like a large user base of people who are paying for it, they can afford to actually delegate larger sets of server resources in those edge cases where someone is going to need that. If that is what you need, fine, I guess it is going to work. But if you're doing a 100-person call and it's not a class, you probably should just be doing a live stream. If you actually care about your privacy, go and self-host Jitsi. If the call is encrypted, I guess it's fine to have it going through Brave servers. If you're not encrypting your call, though, you're basically putting yourself in a situation where you're trusting Brave not to snoop in on your data. Now, I do trust Brave to not do that, because if they did, that would destroy their entire business model. But I still would not use Brave Talk because I actually want to control my Jitsi instance and also not have a really ugly purple theme. I don't know where that theme went they showed in the image on their website where it was just grey and nothing standing out. I want to see that, not this purple nonsense that blinds me when I look at it. So if you want to be private, go and self-host Jitsi. They have guides on their website to do it on Debian, Ubuntu. They have a Docker guide. They have a manual install guide if that's what you want to do. And it's really, really easy. While I am a Brave user, I am more than happy to roast them when they do something really, really dumb. 
I imagine this is just one of the extra revenue streams they want to set up so they can continue building their empire and crushing Mozilla because that just seems to be what Brendan Ike wants to do. Brave Talk isn't bad. It's basically just an inferior version of Jitsi though. So just go and use Jitsi. If you like this video and you want to see more from me and you want to support the channel, I've got this list over here where you can join. Uh, that's a very bad outro. We're going to stick with it. Join this list, Patreon, things like that. Libra Pay, subscribe start down below if you want to support the channel. I've got a podcast called Tech of a Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or six YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and... I'm out. That was the worst outro I've ever done, but we're going to keep it. <laughs>